Ladies and gentlemen, it's profile time. <laughs> and uh, it's more, like more and more like Michael Aspel every week. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Henrik Edward Larson, MBE. Oh, good. Oh, and you can. Henrik Larson. Yes, it is. Um, he has just announced his retirement. Well, I say just announced. Uh, just announced. again. I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and no doubt he'll pop up at Brazilian football next week. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> stop it! <laughs> All right. But uh, Henrik Larsson. Yeah, uh, he was um, born on the twenty eighth of September, nineteen seventy one. Four years after the yeah, uh, summer of love. Summer of love. Yeah. He was a, a performer, Swedish international, and he's joined his first team. Hogeborg in Helsingborg, which where he was born at the age of six. By the time he was 15, uh, he was asked to train with the seniors during the summer. Now, Ho Hogeborg are uh, a lower league Swedish side. And uh, so at the end of 15, he was training with the seniors um, during the summer. And then uh, they moved him up to the senior team. And he played his first full game for them at 17 in the Swedish third division. Um, and at that time, he was uh, doing a, a lot of other jobs. He was packing fruit in, in vegetables in a warehouse, supervising kids in a youth centre, and this was all this while he was still at school. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So it's interesting. You know, He's got a work ethic. Exactly. Yeah. But at seventeen, you know, you know, people often think these these superstars of the game, like Cristiano Ronaldo, is a good example. At seventeen, they're professional contracts and all the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not so the case here, you know. So. Um, he was there for a few years, um, and he played 74 uh, league games for them and scored 23 goals. Um, but he was he was 21, and he still hadn't broken through to one of the big sides. You know, so this is kind of lower end semi pro level, um, and uh, so he's thinking, I'm 21. You know, it's just. Time's ticking away here. But Helsingborg, who um slightly bigger side in, in Sweden, um, and they were in the Swedish first division at the time, and uh, they came in for him, and he signed for them. Uh, he was getting £300 a month without bonuses. Oh, really? Wow. So, yeah. But uh, in his first season for them, he scored 34 goals. Uh, the team was promoted to the top division, um, the Swedish Premier League, for the first time in 22 years. And in his first season in the Swedish top flight, he scored 16 goals and was among the top scorers in Sweden. Um, so he had two good years for Helsingborg. He played about 52 league games for them and scored 48 goals. So a great Cracking. scoring record. Well, I hope he renegotiated his contract. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Getting paid 24 pence a goal. <laughs> <laughs> but still effectively playing semi-pro level there. Yeah, yeah. Um, in, in the Swedish sort of top flight. Maybe they became a pro, uh, a pro club then. But um, all this, uh, he got signed by Feyenoord. They came in for him, the big side, in September 93. Um, he'd nearly joined Grasshoppers of Zurich, um, and they were finalising uh, details. But, but as Henrik put it himself, with all due respect to Swiss football, there was only one decision there. He cost... Two hundred and ninety-five thousand pounds, and half that fee went to his first club as an agreement. That's good, absolutely. But he didn't actually join Feyenoord until November um, of '93 because he wanted to make sure that Helsingborg was safe from relegation before he left. Oh, nice! Um, and in his first season at Feyenoord, in, into the Dutch league, now he scored only one goal in about sixteen games. So not, not the best of starts, but still you got to warm him up. But again, he's in his early twenties now. Yeah. yeah, he was there for a while, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. So. Um, uh, he, his second season, he scored uh, about 11 goals, um, so a bit of a better season. And, and in 1994, of course, he went to the World Cup finals in America with Sweden. Now, he'd hoped for his place in the starting lineup, but, uh, you know, by his own admission later on, he, f he felt very tired by come the tournament and he'd lost touch a bit. The first game he was on the bench, um, because I'm sure we remember Henrik Larsson from, from more recent tournaments, but he was there in 94. No, oh, yeah. I remember his dreadlocks, and I want to stand out uh, yeah. memories for yeah. me, I must say. Yeah, very true. They were cool. They were cool, tidy dreadlocks, weren't they? They, they weren't were, messy. Yeah, they weren't messy. Back when dreadlocks were sort of all around assumed to be a reasonably good idea. It was like <laughs> that guy. Not the case now. <laughs> that guy and the guy from Rage Against the Machine had very yeah, similar. They looked like yeah, 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 yeah. True. Cool yeah. dudes. Zach yeah. De La Rocha, I yeah. believe his name is. Dudes indeed. In the first game, he came on as a, a sub. Um, second game, he started against Brazil. Didn't play too well, though. He said. But uh, in the third game, he was on the bench against Russia, and he said it was such a hot day. It was quite nice to be on the bench because it was air conditioned. <laughs> but um, uh, eventually, that work ethic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> he has come from Sweden, to be fair. Yeah, he'd earned that rest, though. Yeah, I feel. Yeah. Um, Henrik Larsson, Thomas Ravelli, and the boys were eventually knocked out by Brazil in the semi-finals. But they did finish uh, third, and they beat Bulgaria in the third place playoff. Mm. And they had a great tournament. Yeah, they did a fantastic yeah, yeah. tournament. Larsson scored in that game. So in his first World Cup for Sweden. He's 
finished Top third. third. That had been their best performance as the 50s, definitely. Yeah, totally, totally. So, um, so when he, after the World Cup, um, go, he was at final, of course, and, and towards the end of his time at final, he wasn't playing too well. The press were getting on his back a bit, and the new manager um, who was there, because Vim Janssen took him to final. Uh, the, the, the new manager was playing him out of position. He was on the left wing, he was on the right wing, he was in midfield. You know, he wasn't too happy there. Um, and uh, I th- he kind of said he wanted to move, and uh, after a, a little bit of a legal dispute, he moved to Celtic Park when Vim Janssen moved there. And, uh, of course, Vim Janssen, as I said, went took him to Fyrenoord. He's taken him to Celtic for £650,000. He scored a hell of a lot of goals. £650,000 in July ninety seven. Uh, in his first season, Celtic won the league. They stopped Rangers to achieving the 10 in a row. Um, and that was 97-98. In 98-99, he was voted Swedish Footballer of the Year, Players Player of the Year in Scotland and Sports Writers Player of the Year. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a good time was had by him there. Yeah. The following season, um, during Celtic's 1-0 defeat in the UEFA Cup tie against Lyon, um, he suffered a career-threatening injury. It was a horrific leg oh, break, wasn't it? Yeah. Very, it was very awful visceral, to see. Yeah. 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 It was awful in, to see. In the 99-2000 season, so we're yeah. breaking his leg in two places. And he was spent eight months on the sidelines after that. Well, it's a miracle he played again. Yeah. You know, it's an awful, awful injury. It's a very, very reminiscent of the old uh, Eduardo. Mm. Well, I don't know, it's a bit different, because Larson was, was on his feet, wasn't he? And you, it's weird. How you, it's almost like you, you just see the bone pop out the side of his leg. It looks like quite an innocuous challenge Did he, he, wrap, not... he wrapped his foot around the other guy's foot, didn't he? And and his, and his leg broke. I thought he was running, wasn't he? I thought he was yeah, running and it just, sort of, and it just oh, sort of it? snapped, it sort of fell under it, like it just sort of snapped under itself. And he, it's, it's weird when you do see a leg break like that. I've seen a wrestler do that once and, and they sort of put their leg down to plant their foot, but their foot's not there because it's oh, just a God. horrible, horrible yeah. thing. Maybe I'm confused, I'm sorry, yeah. It was awful anyway, I remember it. Mm. But he, he managed to come back and return on the last day of that season, but uh, John Barnes cited his injury as a, a big factor in why he was sacked. Uh, <laughs> <by the Celtic. laughs> Seriously? Yeah. What, from Tranmere or Celtic? <laughs> 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 That's right, yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, but he did play at Euro 2000. Um, Sweden went out in the first round, but he did score um, one goal in that tournament. He will have done, wouldn't he? Against yeah. Italy. Now, the following season, Celtic, he was back. Remember the previous season, he's been out for eight months. Yeah. Next season, what does he do? Well, he scores a total of 53 goals for Celtic <laughs> and wins the um, European Golden Boot. Some would say Scottish football was rubbish. Uh, European mm-hmm. Golden Boot? You can't argue with that, can you? Incredible. Absolutely incredible achievement. And then, of course, when he was at Celtic as well, he helped them reach the UEFA Cup final against Porto, where they lost 3-2. He mm. scored two goals. He said it was the worst moment of his career. He said it was worse than breaking his leg. He was so gutted after that final. Okay, yeah. Now, I can remember watching that final. N- now, to put this in perspective, Porto, they were diving. Or, the Derlai, yeah, yeah. I think it was. He yeah. was diving so much. Now, as I said, put this in perspective. Now, I, I, as you know, I, I grew up in Scotland, and I tend to err towards the blue half of Glasgow, if I'm ruth- ruthlessly honest with you. And I had a bet on Porto winning, and I was watching that game, and I wanted Celtic to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, because yeah. it was just ridiculous. And they took so many fans as well, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And they were fantastic, and Porto were a disgrace, the what way some of their players... What that is for Celtic to get to the what, for my, final as well. For what, to get me supporting them? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is an achievement. No, you're right, to get to that final was incredible. And the last one was a massive, massive part of that. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it, was, it was such a shame for them, it really was. But in his, in his career at Celtic, he won four SPL titles, two Scottish League Cups, uh, three Scottish Cups, and uh, he still holds the record as the um, the Premier, the, the SPL's all-time leading goal scorer with 158 goals in his six-year spell um, in uh, Celtic, and also he holds the record, I believe, for the most number of goals scored um, for a club from the British Isles in European matches. All right, and in 2002, Celtic fans. Uh, selected Larson in the greatest ever Celtic team and he was the only player from outside of Scotland to make that team they've had some players down the years as well so they have they have indeed out of four of the six seasons he was in Scotland he was top scorer the only two where he wasn't was in his first season and the season where he broke his leg here's a little rundown of, of his league form his first season he scored 16 goals in 35 league games second season 29 league goals in 35 league games Third season, eight goals in nine league games. Fourth season, 35 goals in 37 league games. <laughs> Following season, 29 in 33, 27 in 35, 30 in 37. I, I wouldn't have really been surprised if when he broke his leg, 
the bit of leg that flew off. Went in the goal. Just, just stopped the ball. <laughs> just kicked the ball. He <laughs> kicked the ball. <laughs> yeah. Well, he played at um, the World Cup 2002. He scored a couple against Nigeria, and they topped the group of death ahead of uh, England, of course. Mm. Scored against Senegal in the second round, but that's uh, they went out after that. He then um, retired from international football, but then he came out of retirement for Euro 2004. Um, mainly because the country was just like, what the hell are you doing? He cannot stop retiring, Larson. He yeah. retired about five times. Well, that's right. He loves yeah. the game so much. Yeah. Um, he scored three in, uh, three goals in four games that tournament, including goal of the tournament, which is a beautiful diving header oh, yeah, against I remember Bulgaria. That. Yeah. They reached the quarterfinals. After the Euros, he was off to Barcelona. Hmm. Hmm. And I think that was, some might say overdue. He had a season there, didn't yeah. he? He had yeah, two, two seasons, seasons there. Two seasons, was it? Yeah, Would you say that was overdue? I mean, that's no thing. disrespect to Celtic at all. I mean, no, he, he was obviously having a great time there at Celtic because he, cause he, he was scoring freely. But, I mean, yeah, he deserved to go to a club of that size, I think, yeah. definitely. Mm, absolutely. Well, he um, he didn't play too much in his first season. He, um, he scored three goals in 12 games. The following season, he played a bigger part. He scored uh, 10 goals and then won the league again. And, of course, in his final game for Barcelona, he won the Champions League with them. He came on as a substitute and mm. assisted um, both of Barcelona goals in the 2-1 win over Arsenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he was magnificent in that game. He made the difference. I mean, obviously yeah, Barcelona really were playing against ten men, but Arsenal were very resilient up to that. Well, uh, it was Larson that undid them. Well, that's it. Arsenal looks as though they were going to hang on. Yeah, and, and, and win that. But as you say, um, and Ronaldinho said um, when Larson was uh, due to leave Barcelona, he said, "With Henrik leaving us um, at the end of the season, this club is losing a great goal scorer, no question. But I'm losing a great friend. Henrik was my idol, and now that I'm playing next to him, it is fantastic." Ronaldinho no, big shout yeah. Ronaldinho big shout that. and Ronaldinho was probably the best player in the world when he said that yeah 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 so it's quite something um, he played at World Cup 2002 when they reached the second round his only goal was of course the last minute equaliser against England in the two all draw mm-hmm. but he became only the sixth player to score three um, in three just, World Cups he'd score in three World Cups yeah. of course um, and he played again. He came out of retirement for a second time, mm. playing at Euro 2008. Um, but then on October the 11th, 2009, he decided to quit the national team. And this was, of course, pretty much when he decided to quit yeah. football. But uh, after Barcelona, he did rejoin his um, hometown team, Helsingborg, uh, once again. But shortly after signing for them, he was loaned out to Manchester United. He scored yeah. three goals for United. About seven or eight games, was it? Um, I think it was about ten or twelve. Was games. it, yeah? Master stroke that was from yeah. Ferguson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Well, they needed someone to just come in and, and, and fill the time there, and uh, he was didn't just do that. I mean, Ferguson wanted him to stay after. Yeah, yeah that's know. right, yeah. Um, and what was nice, he was given special dispensation by the league to receive a Premier League winner's medal because he yeah. hadn't played the required 10 games, but so he's got a Premier League winner's medal. Oh, cra- cracking, that's good. Um, and then back at Helsingborg, he, he did um, he played the rest of his time there, and which of course finished very recently. He broke his kneecap there, so he, you know, he's, he had so many harsh injuries, yeah. you know, yeah. and he came back from them. Yeah. Yeah. Strongly, he the, wasn't a player that was hampered by those injuries. That's which right, is incredible, really, considering he did have a lot of nasty ones. Mm. Especially as it can affect you psychologically as well Absolutely. as physically as well. Uh, completely. So um, he has uh, said he'd like to move into coaching at, at some point, but uh, he has said that he wants to get involved in floorball. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, it's like a, ho- it's a hockey style game. It's an it? odd game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to Helsingborg have announced that they are going to retire the number seventeen shirt. Oh really? Yeah. Maybe he'll put floorball on the map. Well, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be the first bit of brick his face doing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. He did actually score against Celtic for Barcelona. Didn't he, he did, in the yeah, Champions yeah. League. It was really. Did he celebrate? No, he didn't. But yeah. sadly, he was booed. I thought that was really, really sad. Yeah. It was only from a small section of the crowd, it and he, he he made it so clear that he wasn't celebrating. It was a lovely finish. It was just yeah, a silly odd. Yeah. 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 Do you remember that lob against Rangers? I think it was beauty. It was, it? <laughs> was it an absolute stunner? That was. Wasn't yeah. it? The keeper the keeper was knowingly lobbed that. Yeah, he was. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to me and Cole? Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I shall I shall end with a quote. And this is what Thierry Henry said after the Champions League final itself which was really kind of one of the big highlights of his career coming on and changing the game on the world stage you know because often so many mm. people especially you know English fans said well you know he's good in Scotland but is he really that good mm. and so on and he, yeah. he shut everybody up in that game and, and Thierry Henry said um, after the final people always talk about Ronaldinho Eto, uh, Hewley and everything but I didn't see them today I saw Henrik Larsson he came on he changed the game this is what killed the game sometimes you talk about Ronaldinho and Eto and people like that you need to talk about the proper footballer who made the difference and that was Henrik Larsson tonight and with Come that in, he's John. in the Dean Man's Hall of Fame well done get in there <laughs>